Hey guys, what's up? So, from my personal experiences is where I get some of my videos from. It speaks your truth. It speaks, you know, even if, if it can be humiliating, even if it can be something you don't want people knowing, uh, you can feel ashamed of yourself, you know, this and that. It can always help another person because you went through something that was stupid that you did and it's kind of like a fair warning for somebody that might be doing the same thing to stop. <laughs> like, don't do it. So, I've done videos about sex versus love, right? Sex versus love. Some people consider sex to be love, how they show love. You know, physical intimacy, like touch, feel, you know, all the five senses that we have is um sex is love i have thought that until i grew out of it right at least i thought i thought i grew out of it but i had one more test and this is what i'm going to talk about one more test i fucking failed at it but it's okay because it's okay i learned from it you know what i mean but this is the thing Love is a feeling. Sex can be a feeling, but it's in a different type of way. Like, love is natural. You know, you have to work to feel something when you're having sex. And that's the only way I can really think of how to explain that. But, <sighs> hold on, the lighting is weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> whatever so I'm like pausing because I don't know how to like say this if you believe that sex is love right and you have sex with people and then you get attached to them you're not attached to the people you're attached to the sex the dick or the pussy is your fucking love that's what your love is. You love the sex. You love the whatever. It's not even the person. So you can get attached to a person who's a complete fucking shitbag just because of the sex. Because you feel like they love you because they had sex with you. Right? And this can happen in numerous situations. Hopefully, you know, you can have a one night stand and not get addicted to every single person you have sex with. Because that would be fucked. I would be fucked. I did like a, 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 a list the other day. <laughs> Whatever. But the thing is, is that like mo mainly most of them are people I did not want to have sex with. And like it was one of those like you couldn't say no or you tried to say no, but they didn't stop. Like it was a lot of those. There was there was a lot of those. But I, I, whatever. So anyways, I would be fucked. That's all I'm going to say. So <laughs> you get addicted to the sex. It's, it's, you know what I mean? So even when you start, stop having sex, you kind of feel like that person is, does not love you anymore. You know, unless you break up and everything, that's completely different. But like, if you're like just doing whatever and you believe a certain thing and it's, the actions or something totally different than what you think. Go with what you think, okay? If somebody's having sex with you and leaving, and then they come back and they have sex with you and they leave, and they come back. This is what... Hey, Fabio! Sorry, my birds are literally like just flying around my house and I have my dog right next to me and I'm trying to make sure nothing happens. Okay, so Fabio just... Oh, you stop it. So anyways, if you have somebody that is doing that to you and they're telling you sweet nothings in your ear just for you to let them back in, there's got to be something about you that they either get healing from your sacral chakra when they have sex with you or they just, just need like to feel maybe they have the same thing and they need to feel loved 
maybe they just want to fuck and they knew you know you're a good fuck or they know that you'll just be there like you'll just say yes no matter what so they just have you on the side is like whenever I need sex I know I can go to her like she's whatever you know what I mean um I this isn't obviously deal with guys because I'm sure there's some girls out there narcissistical girls out there or just girls that will use you for money or something and so they'll try to like get money from you and they'll like lure you into like seduction of sex or whatever so it's gonna happen both ways just like differently either way get away from them that's what I'm trying that's the point because love is an emotion okay when you love somebody you put them as a priority when you love somebody you don't put them in a position of hey i'm here oh bye hey i'm here oh bye they they don't they want to make time for you they want to they want to spend time with you they want to make memories they want to do things and they want to get to know you and it's like they don't ask about your past or try to find out shit about you to hurt you or use against you later on in the relationship they actually want to know your past because they want to know what hurt you in the past so they can not do it or try to help heal with it or know not or know how to deal with you like how not deal with you handle you right because a, a good man wants to know how to handle his woman especially if she has a kid he wants to know what triggers her so she does he doesn't hurt her and not even in, like it would be intentional unintentionally you know what i mean but you can have guys or girls it's easier for me to say guys that will come in and out and you might think that they feel a certain type of way about you because of those sweet nothings because of you know whatever but the reason of your subconscious mind of why you think that they have feelings for you even though they're in and out just fucking you whenever and leaving, fucking and whatever and leaving and you think that they have feelings for you, it's because you d d define sex as love, right? So it's like, oh, they automatically have feelings for me because they're having sex with me. And if you have sex with me, that means you love me, right? So that is the subconscious belief behind sex is love because you're not in love with that person especially if they're in and out, especially if they're not treating you right, especially, but you literally think that you're in love with them. But once you can get out of the mindset of it being about, I don't even know, just loving yourself, like putting yourself first, like not letting them take advantage of you, saying no, putting up boundaries, and associating yourself with people that matter, that want to spend time with you, like, those are what the red flags are that we either don't want to see because we don't want to admit them to ourselves, which is a lot of mine. Like, my relationships, I'm very forgiving. I'm very forgiving. I'm very positive. I'm very godlike. I'm very pure. So, it's hard for me to remember, not remember, maybe the things that I repressed, right? Because I didn't want to feel the pain. And it's like, lately, I've been realizing that there's so much pain from a certain relationship. Give yourself grace. <laughs> Thank you. Um, from a certain relationship that I was in, that... It, I healed from, I learned a lot from, but I never hated the person because of what they did for me. And I'm not saying to hate him. I, that's not what I mean. But what I'm saying is I had points where I hated him. But like right now, I don't hate him. Like I don't. Even though he has done bullshit to me lately, like which is why I'm doing this video. Um, you know, it, it comes into perspective when you actually let yourself see what's really going on. If they're not showing you that they love you, they don't love you. 
They don't. And if and if they really do and they're hiding their feelings, they're still not worth it. Because they're still hurting you. And they're still taking advantage of you. And you're still not getting anything from them. And, I mean, I don't really need validation from anybody. But, like, if you need that validation and they're not giving it to you, it's like... If they're gaslighting you or love bombing you, it's like... The red flags are always there. You know what I mean? One of them is actually if they talk shit about their exes... If they talk shit about their exes, that's actually one of the red flags. <laughs> it's weird. I'm just saying that because people don't actually think that or know that. But the red flags are always there in toxic people, toxic relationships, toxic whatever. People, not even toxic, just people that aren't good to be around or that are going to take advantage of you. You know what I mean? So sex is not love. Love is love. Love is the most... by <laughs> love is the most high vibration love and gratitude are the highest vibration of happiness that you can be at 11 11 that you can be at okay people are scared to be happy because it's like once they are happy they don't want to get hurt so it's easier for people to pick to be miserable most of the time not everybody because it's scary to be let down, right? And disappointed. So, when you're a kid and, you know, you're promised something, like if your parents are divorced and your dad says, hey, I'm going to come pick you up, and he never shows up, you get let down, you get... You get let down and you get disappointed, right? You feel like you're unworthy. And if they have another family or... <laughs> wow, I just thought of something. So, okay. Perfect example. And then I'll say how it's fucked up in my relationship. I have not said anything to anybody about my relationship with this person, but maybe I'll start doing it, okay? Okay. <sighs> So, say you're supposed to go do something with your dad, right? And your parents are divorced. And you're really excited to do this. And then he doesn't show up. But then you end up finding out that, you know, he, he, can't, he didn't show up, but he also canceled with you and told you that he'd rather bring his new girlfriend rather than you. Like, he's pretty much like, oh, sorry, I'm not coming. I'm bringing blah, blah, blah instead. You're going to feel let down, abandoned, rejected, not good enough, unworthy, something's wrong with you, it's your fault, you're damaged, you're broken, you're bad, all the core wounds, I'm, did I say damaged? Yeah. Disappointment is stemmed from so many other things, right? It has so many other feelings. Kind of like anger is a secondary emotion, right? You have an emotion and then you can get angry about it. It's a secondary emotion. You don't just automatically get mad. There's something that gets you mad, okay? So disappointment is the feeling after you get let down from something. It's actually not really a secondary emotion. It's not, it's just, you know, whatever. But disappointment is what can happen when you feel like you trust somebody or you feel like they love you and they show you something totally different. You have to open your eyes. You have to. Because if you don't, it could kill. Like, if you don't know how to heal yourself, if you're not doing inner work, if you don't know how to do that, it could kill you. And I don't mean kill you as in, like, it's literally going to kill you, but it could hurt a lot. And you want to stay away from that. So what I do, I don't talk to anybody or let anybody in that will cause me distress. Even though I know how to deal with distress, I don't have to. And I definitely don't have to do it for somebody that does not give me respect. Right? So sex with a person is not love. 
It's not love. It's not pure. Love is pure. Love is unconditional. Love is what we get from our higher power and they want to, they want, we're here. Joy is our birthright. Like we're supposed to be happy, but instead we're brought up in a certain type of way and conditioned into not wanting to be happy. Like we want to be happy, but the things that God or the higher power universe gives us to be happy, we reject, right? <laughs> so it's like, you can meet a really good person and you're caught up with this person that's, wow. You're caught up with this person who's just using you for sex whenever they need it, you know, and this, this person comes along and you think that you're like having something with this other person. So you say no to the other, the one that will bring you the happiness. It's like these, but your temptation of the other person and being treated like shit is what you're used to. It's an addiction. So you don't know how to leave it. It's, and it's weird to be happy. Then you're skeptical of it. You know, and it takes time to get out of those patterns and beliefs and everything is about beliefs, man. Whatever you believe is what is going to happen. Your perspective is your reality or whatever this, whatever that thing is. But it's true. If you believe that the sky is blue, the sky's going to be blue. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you believe that, like, beliefs can limit. Okay, so when you label something, it's like you're limiting it to be what you're labeling it as. I wish I could remember the examples. I can't. I'll have to try to remember. But do you guys get what I mean? It's, I've come really far to be able to say that if the person ever came back into my life, I would push them away. I still love them. I still love them. I really do. And it's not because of the sex, but I don't want anything to do with them because of the sex. And that's the crazy part. Because sex used to be love to me. It's kind of like I don't love you. Like, if you, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it's like, because of the sex, it, that's actually why I don't want anything to do with this person. The sex is what ruined it. The sex was the underlying issue in certain roots to the relationship. Because I, it looks like that's all it was. And I'm not saying it was just him, because I used him a lot. Or I, I didn't use him, but, like, I let things go to have sex. Or I did not bring up the problems that we had because of sex. I would let him stay over because I wanted to have sex. Or if he was drunk and he needed somewhere to go, I took advantage of that. So it works both ways. But it's different on his side. It's more betrayal. Mine is just like being stupid. <laughs> like just wanting to get fucking fucked. Like it's just mine is stupid. But we get addicted to the sex. We fall in love with the sex. If the sex is good. If the person is telling us sweet nothings in our ear. It makes it even better. Right? So just be careful of that. Because sex is a very powerful thing. And whoever you have sex with, you're going to have a piece of them with you for the rest of your life. And all the people that came with them for the rest of your life. Unless you heal your sacral chakra and you're, you're wounding your womb. Do some womb, womb healing. You know, like the womb. Um, the way I do that is super simple is I picture a coconut and it's cut in half and you're using a spoon to just scrape it. That's how I, 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 pick, I visualize that. But I know that nowadays 
I don't know why I'm gonna I feel like I'm gonna cry to this I know nowadays dating is is it's it's casual I know that you know they try to put down men in to make them not strong anymore to make them more feminine because the more power that we have in our masculines in the world it's it's intimidating so there's programming lately well for a while like men's privileges and all that and they're trying to build up women and make men feel like nothing so they do get addicted to drugs they do go and look for something else you know it's through sex through porn through eating you know what I mean? Like, they end up getting into that routine and we lose our men. And if you have a woman that's putting you down, you, you lose your men. Like, we need the strong men in the world. Why doesn't under anybody understand that? Especially the good ones. Like, especially if they're, like, a good father. Or, don't even get me started on that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. Like, things keep popping up and it's like, Every single one is, like, one that's relating to either what I'm doing right now or life or something. And it's like, dude, like, please stop. Like, just stop. Like, it was... Mm. So, that one doesn't make sense, but whatever. <laughs> so, it's not how it used to be where you court somebody. You know, you don't have somebody that... You do. I'm not saying you don't at all but we need more of this this is why i i for i raise my child as a gentleman because we don't have as much anymore but it's not their fault it's it's the programming of society and it's you know people telling men that they can't have feelings so it's like there's so much that people just aren't seeing like anyways anyways The whole wait until you get married, right? About 22, 22. About sex. I obviously didn't. I obviously did not wait. Um, I waited a year with the person that I did it with. I was 14 years old. Um, or 13. No, I met him when I was 13. Yeah, I think. But... I did on his birthday, too. <laughs> but it was a year, you know. And my son just started dating. And I told him not about the birds and the bees and, like, freaking how to have sex and where you put it and all that fucking bullshit. I had to talk with him about don't be like me and fuck on the first date. Because it gets you nowhere. And that kind of develops into sex is love does it has something to do with it because I always used to think well if I don't if I really like this person 23 23 if I really like this person and I don't have sex with them and then all of a sudden like I really really like them and then I finally have sex with them after waiting and they suck at it what am I gonna do so that was always my thought so it was like okay I gotta fuck them first Make sure I like that. And then I can develop a relationship with them. If I like the sex. That's how I did it. That's how I looked at it. So seeing my son in a healthy... I know he's 14. He's 13, but still. It's fun. To, it's cool to see. To, and it's my, me raising him that way. Like, that just proves that I can have a relationship that's not toxic. But I'm waiting for the right person. I'm also not letting people in. Like, that's the thing. I'm very selective of who I talk to, who I let into my life, who I open my door to. Because whoever you open your... Uh -uh, Jessica. Whoever you open your door to is the... the, the um, That's going to affect your, your peace, your... All that. So your healing, your inner healing. Like, your internal is what God works on. It's not your external. He wants to work on you within. So. I. 
have started over and have not had sex for the past two plus years because I was waiting for a certain person. I would only have sex with them. And I tried dating because he was in and out. Still is. And I'm, I'm, I don't want anything to do with that anymore. Like, that's like the last toxic thing. Like, that's the last thing that I have not said no to yet. That I have not gotten away from. And it's sex because sex used to be an addiction for me. And I told him that. So, it's kind of like, he fucks me. I should stop saying it like that. He has sex with me knowing that I have an addiction to it. Knowing that I love him. Knowing that in the past I would just still always be there. Knowing that it makes him feel better. And doesn't care about the way it makes me feel. Ah! Fabio. <laughs> like, that's one in itself. Like, how could you do that to somebody that you love? They don't. And if they do, that's fucked up that they would do that to you. That's like, not okay. So, that is the last lesson that I have had to learn and go through this last time. To have no toxic people in my life. Nah! They're doing so good. Um, yeah, so I've learned that. So when they ha say, wait until you're married, I started over because I wanted to kind of be like that. Like, I, the le when I met this person, I didn't want to have sex with them the first time I met them. I wanted it to be different. I wanted to have a different kind of relationship experience, and I gave in. Like, I gave in. But when I said no, he's the only person that stopped. So I got to give him that. Um, um, but yeah, like, that's, he's was my biggest temptation. Mm-hmm. Good job, baby. Pick a spot. Pick a, pick a spot. Okay. There you go. But if sex is, if you look at sex as love, you gotta, oh my God, you gotta realize that it's not. <laughs> and if that person is treating you like shit, that's not love. That's just a good fuck. That's all it is. So my advice is, is to find somebody that will wait, give you space, let you do whatever you want to do on your on your time, like not force things, not push things, not make you feel like you have to do it, you know. Find somebody that's going to do that. If you're in a toxic relationship right now, think about that. That's healthy, you know, and you can pace yourself. You don't even have to like do nothing like, you know, you can be like a teenager and like start with making out and then, you know, like a couple months later, you can go to, I like go to fingering, like, you know, like I, I'm not going to keep going because I don't know who's going to be watching this because apparently certain people watch my TikTok and everything like that, that probably shouldn't see certain things but that's it's it is what it is um yeah my son though I'm proud of myself because I watch him and his relationship which is different you know whatever but I taught him not to go fast I and I know like whatever like and she's shy so I don't think she would try to push him to do anything either. But, like, 
the fact that like like our talk was about pace it was about don't jump into anything too quickly you know blah 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 blah, blah. and and because that's what I've learned it's pace and I really No, I do. I had to get, like sit there and question myself and be like, do I really love him? Or is it the sex? I had to think about it. Um, but it's the, it, I love him too. I love him unconditionally, but a lot of the intensity or the passion in how strong it used to be, that's not there anymore. It's kind of just like, yeah, I love you. I love you unconditionally. I'm deep about it, you know what I mean? But it's just words. It doesn't really have any meaning or feeling to it anymore. I know that's how I feel mentally. Like, I can say, like, that is how I feel, but I don't feel it. But I know, so I can say it. But I don't feel that way anymore. The feelings aren't there. But I know the feelings are underneath. But they're just not activated. And I don't know if they ever will be. But the sex is what kills it. So if he ever came back and tried, my biggest thing with him is I have to say no. And it's not even like it's a conversation. Like it goes like right to sex. And it's like I get so caught up and I'm just like, Mm. Like last time, I was supposed to say no. I kept telling myself every time, I was like, if he ever messages you, you say no. And I was like, God, bring me this. Give it to me. I can do it. I'm ready. And then I did it. And I. <laughs> but you do it too. You're like, oh, well, maybe if I do it, like, he'll like me or like he'll come back more or like, you know what I mean? Like, you do that too. So it's stupid. But, <laughs> you know. It just is what it is. Like, sex is not love. Love is a feeling. I love him, but I don't have the feeling of love behind it. So, and it's not lust because I don't lust over having sex with him. Just when he appears, it's like, okay, let's have sex. Like, because I want to, but I shouldn't. But I would say I would, I would, it would be totally different if I ever saw him ever again. Um, and the more time that goes by, the less I care to ever see him again. So remember that, like do that before it's two years later down the road and you're finally figuring it out. Like, cause you didn't want to see the truth cause you didn't want to feel the pain. So it was like everything that was happening around you you didn't realize because you didn't want to feel the pain so it was just like oh it's okay oh it's okay and that's why I kept having sex and not talking about anything because it was just like oh it's okay it's okay it's okay and you want to just like be with that person during that moment and and experience it and you know what I mean and not fight if you don't see them but I'm too forgiving so I, I keep being, like, so nice, putting passion out there, and getting rejected, and it's okay, because rejection is God's protection, and I know he's not good for me to be around. I know that, but he's my addiction at the same time. He's not an addiction, a temptation, but I can still say no, even though I unconditionally love him mindfully. Because I've had the unconditional love feeling for him. So I know. And unconditional love won't, it doesn't go away. It doesn't. Unconditional love does not go away. Um, but he's... He's more than just a person to me. Like... it's It sucks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Like, it sucks. But no, it sucks. Um... Love is not sex, guys. Uh, 
I don't know what to say on needing to have sex in the beginning to know before you like them. Because honestly, I don't know what I would do in that situation. I really don't. I don't know if I would even stay. I don't know. It would have to, I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't had to deal with it yet. But, <laughs> um, and when it comes, I'll deal with it then. Because I don't plan on him coming back and I don't, I know I'm going to have to move on. Um, and that's the thing too. Like, I've tried to move on from this person and it just like does not, it's not, I have fucking, I don't have a problem trying to find somebody like at all, at all, at all. And I'm not being conceited, but fu I have no problem. I have no problem. I can pick anybody and I can have them. But, and I'm, but I'm a high valued woman. I like val valuable men and I don't have standards as in like certain things, but like you could be somebody, never mind, but I'm too nice. And because I push down the bad, because I don't want to feel it, it's like it never happened. So guys, if this is happening to you, if this person isn't trying to commit to you, if they're not trying to work on a relationship with you, and they're just fucking you here and there, please stop. Please stop. Stop. Go find somebody else. Stop. Love yourself enough to walk away and say no to that person no matter what you feel for them. Because the more I do that with him, the more the feelings do increase. You know, but the more he's not around, the less I care about sex. But that will change once I move on. You know what I mean? So I don't have the desire, really, unless he comes around. But I hope this video helped in some way because I feel like I went off in so many different directions. But at the end of the day, like, love is so much so much it's love is so much better than sex ha having true love for somebody unconditional love even though it's, it might not be activated at that time is the best feeling in the world and it can give you such a high and such an or orgasmic Sorry, I had a phone call. Um, so it cut it off. I don't remember what I was saying, though. <laughs> Pretty much, like, I hope this helps. Because I'm experiencing it. So, I might not be explaining it that well. But, say no. Please. Love yourself enough. Have that value. Value yourself and know that you're worthy enough for better. Because that's not how you should be treated. That's not how anybody should be treated. That's not even how that person should be treated. You know? And that's unconditional love. Having love for people that are hurting you. Like, and still loving them. Your enemies, still loving them. Because if you know that they are a, a child of God, they have purity in them. But life has happened to them. Everybody is angry for a reason. And you know what? Somebody could be yelling at you because they feel weak. That's how I used to be. If somebody made me feel like I was weak, I would scream at them. I would yell at them. But that was like a different reaction than what I was feeling. But that was like a defense mechanism. You know what I mean? And we learn these things in childhood and then we grow up and we're walking around like a bunch of children, like with mechanisms that aren't working anymore. You know, that's your inner child. That's your subconscious. So that's what I mean by when you say, I say your subconscious mind is really in love with the sex and not the person. You have to separate that. You have to separate. Okay. 
Sex is awesome. Sex is good. Checklist on that. What about the person? You got to separate those energies. You got to separate those energies. You have to. Like for me to say no to this person when he approaches me ever again, if he does. And it's like, I'm not going to stop living my life. I never had, I mean, I did for a little bit, for a lot of it, but I grew out of it. I pushed through everything and I healed myself and I did a lot of fucking work on myself. And you know what? I know he was trying to hurt me the entire time. I know that he was trying to test me. I know that he was putting me through fucking obstacles to see if I was who I said I was. And I fucking am who I said I was. And you know what? What he did to me made me stronger and a better person and proved him even more of who I said I was. So sometimes people that come into your life actually are the most beneficial people that you will ever meet but they can also be the ones that betray you and hurt you the most promise and i should do a video on that <laughs> because it's important because that's something to be thankful for that's something to be grateful for i am so grateful for that person and again i love him unconditionally but i don't want to be with him anymore <laughs> that's what it comes down to yeah okay see you guys later bye real quick i had the the test that i had that i failed i had to go through that and experience the pain and disappointment to remember all the things that were repressed that also triggered that feeling that's why i was put to the test and was supposed to fail in order to remember, in order to remember my worth, in order to remember not to go back. That's in heal. See what I mean? It's cool how it all works out, but it sucks when it's happening. <laughs> Just be strong about it. Bye, guys.